Brightstorm has thousands of high-quality videos covering all major subjects. Please check out more at www.brightstorm.com. Finding an inverse graphically. The way you find an inverse graphically is by reflecting it across the line y equals x. And for each one of these examples, I've drawn that line in. It's the diagonal line that goes to the origin and has a slope of 1. Okay, so for each problem, we're asked, is the relation 1 to 1? If so, sketch the inverse on the same axes. 1 to 1 means it passes the horizontal line test. Horizontal line test. So let's go through each one and see if it passes the horizontal line test before we do any sketching. 1, yes, horizontal line test, fine. 2, mm, not good. Look, there's a horizontal line that crosses it three times. Not 1 to 1. And if it's not 1 to 1, that means it doesn't have an inverse. How about this next one, parabola? Everyone loves y equals x squared. It mm, doesn't pass the horizontal line test. So y equals x squared does not have a, uh, an inverse unless you put it in the domain restriction like we'll see in number 5. Not one, two, one. Okay, number four. Yeah, that one passes a horizontal line test, so we'll come back to that. And number five. Now look at the difference between three and five. It still kind of looks like a parabola, only it's half of a parabola. In fact, this is the equation for y equals x squared, where x is greater than or equal to zero. You've probably seen that in your textbook, but you might have ignored it. Now that I only have half a parabola, now it's one to one, and now I can find the inverse of it. Okay. So for numbers, looks like 1, 4, and 5, we're going to be drawing inverses, so let's try it. Now, when I do these, one thing that I like to do is I like to fold my paper. And this is something, if you're using pencil, this is a trick you could try. What I do is I fold my paper along the line y equals x, and then I kind of, well, before I fold, I guess, I darken this function with my pencil, darken, darken, darken. It has to be pencil. You kind of go over this heavily with lead so that when you fold your paper and then kind of rub it a little bit, you're going to get the image that's reflected across the axis. Let's see if I can draw it. Uh, whoosh, 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 kind of looks like a cello or something. Um, that's not perfect. Like this distance here, whatever that distance is, should be the same distance here. And I can see that I didn't do that quite right. But if you trace it with pencil heavily, fold your paper and rub, you'll get a really good representation. I'm going to write that down. Fold paper, rub, but you must use pencil because pen, of course, won't, uh, won't rub off. Must use pencil. Okay, so that's one strategy for you to try, a tip. Okay, let's try number four next. Four is one of those that for me is really hard to tell. Like any point that's on the line y equals x will stay on the line because when I switch the x and y coordinates, it's still going to stay at that same point. Um, but other than that, looks like it's going to go something like this. This is one where I wish I could fold my paper with pencil and rub. I believe that would be the inverse there. Okay, let's try number five. Now number five, again, any point that's on the line is going to stay on the line. And then this little bump here is going to be reflected up like that. So I have just this little half of a parabola here. This equation, by the way, would be y equals square root of x, which already has a domain restriction where x has to be greater than or equal to zero. Ooh, interesting. That's something you're going to get into if you have a pretty advanced level class, is how you can do inverses of those type of functions algebraically with their domain restrictions. Okay, so finding an inverse graphically, the way you do it is you reflect across the line y equals x. My tip for you is to use pencil and rub it off. If you can't do that, do your best to make each point that's on the line y equals x stay on y equals x, and then try to reflect some key points from there, and then connect your points together. And by two. I can't do this with you two laughing back there. <laughs> so if we had... No, that's not right. Three coplanar points. So have you ever gotten off an airplane? <laughs> that should be... Yeah. Dang. Is it like 500 degrees in here or what? All right, so when you're in chemistry class, you're going to be doing a lot of work. You're going to be bleh, starting over. So as an example, we could consider like you've got a chain hanging from two, um, two fix. <laughs> <laughs>